As you take a look at the globe here, you're seeing a lot of weather systems, a lot of cloud cover on here. This is all what you could see with the naked eye if you're to be up in space. But there's a lot happening in the atmosphere that you can't see with your eyes. In order to see that, you've got to use a water vapor satellite. So we're going to switch the view here, and now you're seeing something totally different. You're seeing a measure of the moisture that's in the atmosphere. So if you look toward the equator, you see a lot of this red, orange, yellow, even some of that green coloring. That's an indication of very moist air. But as you look up toward the poles here, you see all this brown and purple coloring? That's an indication of very dry air. Every now and then, you can see this here as the Atlantic Ocean comes into view. You'll see this little finger of these brighter colors, this moisture coming away from the equator. That is an atmosphere. River. And we actually have a lot of these happening around the globe at any given time. You can see here all the moisture is kind of confined toward the equator, but we have these little moisture rivers kind of extending away. Those are all atmospheric rivers, and they're all pretty strong. They carry a lot of water. The strongest ones carry 7 to 15 times the flow of the Mississippi River, and that's about 10.5 trillion gallons of water per day. That's just for one atmospheric river. And again, look how many we have happening around the globe. So let's talk a little bit more about the atmospheric river. And to dissect one, we're going to have to bring it into the studio. So here's our ocean here, and we're going to bring in the atmospheric river. One thing to remind you, though, you wouldn't be able to see this with the naked eye. Again, we'd have to use our special satellite to see this. If we were to take a slice and see how wide this is, you'd notice it's only about 250 to 375 miles wide. That seems like a lot, but it's really about, only about the distance between L.A. and San Francisco. Now, all all this moisture is really low in the atmosphere. It's down below about 10,000 feet. And that means if you're in a jetliner, you're up around 30,000 feet. You are well above all that moisture. It's way down by the surface. And that means eventually it's going to interact with terrain. And for that, we're going to have to bring in a little model here of the coastal mountains. Look what happened to the atmospheric river. It was forced to rise. And when the air rises, it cools, and eventually it will start to condense cloud cover out. So what you'll notice here is we start forming clouds. Eventually, we start forming heavy rain. With the heaviest rain occurring over the mountain and foothill locations. The only problem, sometimes that overlaps with our area burn scars, and that's why meteorologists always pay attention whenever we see an atmospheric river in the forecast.